Good morning, St. Michael's, and thank you uh, again for allowing me to be here. It is an honor to be here with my St. Michael's family and friends. And so we begin our Eucharist, or excuse me, we begin our liturgy. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest and peace to his people, his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, uh, heaven and the king. Almighty God, uh, and Father. Father, we, we worship you. you, we give you thanks, thanks. We, we praise you for your glory. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Father, Lord God, Lord God Lamb of God, God, you take away the sin of the world. Have, have mercy on us. You are, you are seated at the right hand, hand of, the of the Father. Father. Receive, receive our prayer. prayer. For, for you, you alone are Lord. the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see in your one and eternal glory. O oh, Father, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Psalm 29, ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. 
The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing a witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. A reading from the Gospel of John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him. Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you of what, very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent, serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the words of my lips, and the meditations of our hearts be found pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Today is Trinity Sunday. It always follows Pentecost when the Holy Spirit breaks out. This is a well-known passage from John 
but it's a rarity in the Gospels because it shows Jesus discussing in some detail all three persons of the Trinity. And Jesus's words here should not be mistaken for a theological treatise on the one God in three persons. Jesus uses the language of metaphor. However, we want facts and concrete answers, but all religious language is metaphor by necessity because religion points to a mystery that you don't know, that you can't know until you have experienced it. In this encounter, Jesus challenges Nicodemus to move from theory into practice, from knowledge into faith, and from curiosity to commitment. So just who is Nicodemus? It says here he is a leader of the Jews, particularly that leadership who were hostile to Jesus, which explains why Nicodemus has to sneak in the night. And for John, one of the major themes is darkness and light. It starts back in the prologue. Jesus is the true light, which enlightens everyone. Nicodemus doesn't want anyone to see him. And this is common in John's gospel. People act because of the fear of the Jewish leadership. And this is a man who, because he's part of the Jewish leadership, is really afraid of himself. And yet, he comes to Jesus, and he should be afraid, but not for fear of what others will say or do. He should be afraid, and we all should be afraid because of what Jesus can do. Because to come to Jesus is to take a risk. It's a risk to walk towards the light. It's an act of vulnerability. And we have to be careful. Because if we really don't want to change, we really shouldn't go to Jesus. Because to do so answers an invitation an invitation that God is constantly issuing in our lives, an invitation to come and be transformed. If you don't want to change, you need to steer clear of Jesus. In this exchange, Nicodemus calls Jesus rabbi and acknowledges that Jesus comes from God because only God could do the signs that Jesus has performed and then Nicodemus and Jesus talk at cross purposes because Nicodemus can't see that bigger picture. And the term that's often translated as born again in our translation today, it's born from above. And, and that, that phrase born again has been hijacked and I was glad to see the translation, born from above. But Nicodemus takes it on a literal level. He's just looking at the surface. He's focused on the signs and not what the sign point to. It's not so much that his faith is faulty. He's headed in the right direction. It's that the faith is immature. His faith is incomplete. What's interesting about this passage is that Jesus starts talking to Nicodemus in the singular you, He's just talking to Nicodemus. Second person singular. But by verse 11, he's talking to second person plural. You, all of us. Jesus is talking to all of us. And one way to look at this passage is to see Jesus speaking about the need to be born from above as an invitation, an invitation to let God work in our lives. Sometimes we get caught up in seeing ourselves only as sinners and not as beloved children of God. We're so busy focusing on being unworthy, miserable wretches that we miss that opportunity, that opportunity to use life experience to open our imagination, to reconsider our life and relationship with God. 
to let God work in our lives. We stand around like Nicodemus saying, how can these things be? Instead of just accepting the invitation to be born from above. To be born from above as beloved children of God, which is who we are. It's time to stop putting our relationship with God in its neat little box over here. It's time to stop compartmentalizing. We like to keep it on that safe intellectual plane. But now is the time to take that risk. Do we need to be born from above? Yes, but not in that limited literal sense because it is an ongoing transformation. It is not just once. We need to be born again and again and again. For we are human and we are broken and we do fail. And sometimes we still only sneak to visit Jesus in the dark. But we need to keep returning to abide with Jesus. And this is a time for us to answer the invitation to prepare to take the risk to let God work in our lives. About 16 years ago, my best friend from sixth grade was diagnosed with cancer. And Jim went through treatment and was pronounced cancer free. And then as often happens, the cancer returned. And I remember being so devastated and feeling hopeless. And I spoke with Jim and he told me with certainty that it was gonna be all right. And he asked if I was gonna keep praying for him. And I said that I would try. And I was in the seminary at the time. And I remember one morning going into the seminary chapel around that time and asking God to help me. And in the course of morning prayer, we came to a hymn. And I remember standing up and trying to sing, but all that would come out were tears that streamed down my face. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb to heal the sin-sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead. We are constantly getting an invitation that God is constantly issuing in our lives an invitation to come and be transformed, to let God work in our lives. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. And the people say, amen. Together, let us recite 
the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made to us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, our presiding bishop. Susan, Jennifer, and Porter our bishops, Beth, our rector, Tim, our celebrant, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Lord, we pray for peace in our world. We pray for the sustenance and all that we need that you will give us. And uh, we pray for the continued faith in the journey of this parish and for your church. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your spirit. Uh, we thank you for the ability to be able to come together and give you thanks and praise. We, we pray for the continued success of um, the health of our world. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom.
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Lord, you suffered at human hands the pain of false arrest, torture, and unjust punishment. And you commended us to comfort those in prison. Build a fire in your people, Lord, that we may never learn patience, that we may never learn patience with prejudice or make peace with oppression, that we may burn with zeal for justice, proportion, and equal protections under the law for all people. In the name of him who died condemned. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No, and done. things and done, done and left undone. And so, so hold us, hold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together using the words that our Savior Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our Lord. daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those, those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from, from evil. For thine, thine is, the is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever, and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we pray. God of love, we, we thank you for bringing, bringing us, together us together in this place on this day, day to, to honor, honor and to celebrate you and your people, the living body of Christ. Body of Christ. Jesus. Jesus told his disciples. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among, among them. Bless this gathering as, as a sacramental right, a visible sign of your love for us and our love for one another. Even in the absence of the bread and the wine, let us feed on you, your Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in our hearts with faith and thanksgiving. Amen. And God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And may God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the holy and undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to God's heavenly country, where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Our liturgy has ended, but our service has begun. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And the people say, thanks. Amen. Amen.